Today I'm going to talk about the law of attraction, manifestation, dream boards, the book The Secret, and I'm also going to talk about the science behind why I think it actually works. Now, I do admit it has been a video that I've been procrastinating a bit because there's just so, so much research and so many different theories of why it could work. And I think it's because psychology is based on this idea of our thoughts changing real world outcomes. And so really, today is just me brushing the surface of why this could work. My name's Rowanna. I'm a psychologist from Sydney, Australia. I've also studied psychology at uni for the last six years. I guess that training kind of prepared me to read research papers, interpret results, be able to kind of analyze if something is scientific or not scientific, because that is part of our training. Now, there is so much to get into, I want to dive right in. Let's just talk about what is the law of manifestation and what this idea is about. Uh, you've probably seen it on a lot of YouTube videos from different influencers. I might pop in some clips here. Did you know that you have attracted every single thing in your life up until this very moment? It's my mood board day. Vision boards, dream boards, whatever you want to call them, you guys know I love them. I often credit them with, well, basically everything. The idea of manifesting is you think very clearly about a goal that you want to achieve, reaching a certain number of subscribers on YouTube, or being in a relationship with someone in particular, um, a project that you want to start, like writing a book, or making a movie, or achieving some financial goal, like... Um, getting a certain amount of money by a certain time. You can really manifest anything. The kind of core tenet of it is essentially that you think really hard about it, visualize what it's like to achieve that goal, put your body in a state of gratitude as if that is that is down your path and that has already happened to you. And the universe in turn will align with that and provide you that goal or steps towards that goal sometime in the future. So there have been lots of very well documented instances of very famous people giving anecdotal evidence of times when the law of manifestation has worked for them. Uh, a really prominent example is Oprah who said she manifested her role in The Color Purple, which is a movie. Now what I learned from that, it, that moment absolutely changed my life forever because I had drawn The Color Purple into my life. I didn't know Steven Spielberg. If you just dig on YouTube and you say, um, manifestation success stories or something, you will probably find thousands and thousands of people who claim that they manifested their car to the number of subscribers to um, a relationship that they're in or that they manifested their ex back. And today my goal is not to say that all of these people are lying and that manifestation doesn't work, but I want to kind of separate a little bit the science of why it might work from what some of the claims are, the idea that it's involves quantum physics and the universe aligning with you, which is not as scientifically supported. Alrighty, let's hop right in. So I'm going to be referring to my laptop quite a lot because I've written up a lot of the uh, papers and stuff here. So the first one is the theory of planned behavior. And this was developed by a really prominent social psychologist who is currently at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. So the paper is called From Intentions to Actions, A Theory of Planned Behavior from 1985 by Isek Azjian. And I might just chuck up the whole theory of planned behavior so you can see it. Uh, there's a bit of a complicated math formula, but this is like the easier one to explain. Essentially, it says that attitudes, subjective norms, and perceived behavioral controls will influence intention and then therefore behavior. So I might just map this onto a concrete example, which makes it easy to explain. Let's say I want to manifest getting abs. And my goal, and I manifest very hard, I'm going to put that on my dream board. I want abs by the end of the year. Attitude is whether I think this is a good idea or not. Do I have uh, an idea that getting abs is going to be really healthy for me, it's going to result in me being really happy down the line and that overall this is going to improve my standard of living? Probably yes. Subjective norm uh, takes into account the opinions of those around us. So do I think that my friends and family will be supportive of this? Do I think that I will be viewed well in society if I do this or do I feel like everyone's going to shun me? Um, so chances are with the ab thing, it's going to be great. The third one is perceived behavioral control. How much control do I actually think I have over this? And when it comes to abs, we can probably have a very high level of perceived control because we kind of know diet and exercise are two things that significantly influence our ability to get abs and we have a high degree of control over that. 
So let's say we have a very positive attitude, that subjective norms are all pointing in the direction of our goal, plus we have a high degree of perceived control. That actually generates the intention and then the behavior to actually work towards that goal. How this might explain some of the manifestation is the idea that if you're putting something onto your dream board, chances are you have a very positive attitude of what that thing is, as well as very positive subjective norm of like, you know what, this is going to be good for me and people around me are probably going to perceive it to be really good as well. The secret talks a lot about the idea of truly believing that this will work, having an abundance mindset of the universe will work with me and gives people a higher level of perceived control. As you can see, behavior is really the core of it, right? Like you need to have the behavior, otherwise the outcome doesn't work. Um, and I think lots of people, when they talk about dream boards and manifesting, they do say like the world or the universe doesn't work unless you do. And so I really do support that fact. And I think that obviously just sitting at home manifesting things without doing anything about it means it's, it ain't gonna work. One thing people probably are wondering if you're not familiar with this idea is like, what is the law of attraction or what is manifestation? And I, I want to read it as opposed to summarize it because I want to actually quote it proper. Like attracts like. So if you envision being rich or in good health, it will actually bring you wealth or good health. It acts through a medium of thoughts which are magnetic and they kind of emit a positive or a negative frequency and then whichever thoughts are sent out into the universe will attract similar energy. It's kind of like um, if you watch a TV, you will be sending and receiving signals at the same wavelength. And it basically says that if you think positively about things, positive things will come in. But there's also the flip side, which is if you think really negatively about things, um, we will attract negative things in. And that's uh, directly from the book, The Secret by Rhonda Bunn. Which funnily enough, I actually read in high school. I really heard the ruckus around the book and I thought this is really cool. And at the time I was like, oh, interesting, but it didn't really register for me. Anyway, one way we might explain this idea of positive thoughts leading to a positive outcome is something called the placebo effect. And this is one of the most widely documented effects in psychology. Um, it's kind of hard to, to link a specific study to it. However, it relates a little bit more to medical research where people have been in a blind experiment, which means they don't know what uh, the medicine given to them is, or even double-blind experiments where even the experimenters don't know if they're giving true medicine or fake medicine. Participants are split into two groups. One group gets like the real medicine and one group gets like the fake medicine, which is usually like a sugar pill or something. And they actually find that people in the fake group actually uh, improve as well because everyone believes that they got the real medicine. The placebo effect really points to the power of the mind and how strong that can be. My favorite example of the placebo effect is in Harry Potter. So if you Google like liquid luck, Ron, Quidditch, that whole scene's probably going to come up. Essentially, Harry uh, was able to get a potion um, called Felix Felicis, which was the luck potion. And Ron, they had like a big Quidditch game coming out and Ron was like a nervous wreck because the Slytherins were like bullying him and stuff. Um, and he was like, I need to back out. I can't do this. And so Harry does this thing where during breakfast, he pretends to slip the luck potion into Ron's cup. And Ron kind of sees it and is like, oh my gosh, why are you doing this? You're wasting it. But he kind of thanks Harry. He drinks the potion and then he goes on to absolutely smash the Quidditch game. Um, he saves like every goal. He's super confident about it. And it wasn't until afterwards that I think... Harry reveals to like Hermione that he didn't actually open the jar and it was all essentially Ron himself. The key behind this was Ron believed that he had luck on his side. He had this really positive thought kind of going into the Quidditch match, which is vastly, vastly different to before where he was like a nervous wreck. He believed everything that people were saying about him, that he was a bad goalkeeper, that he didn't deserve to play, that he should pull out. In that instance, the power of belief and the positive thinking actually created the outcome of him winning the game. And obviously Harry Potter is not scientific evidence. However, I think it's a great example of if we think positively about things, that is definitely going to set us up for a much higher chance of actually getting what we want. Um, and another example of this is self-fulfilling prophecies. And there are some incredible studies out there of and kind of scary actually, of classes being separated uh, randomly into two classes and teachers being told 
this is like the A class, these are the smart kids, this is the C class, these are the kids who do really poorly, even though there's no actual difference. And by the end of the year, the class which is which the teacher thinks is the A class actually ends up doing much better than the class where the teachers are told this is the bad class. And I think that belief somehow changed the teacher's actions. Well, the kids were more confident in asking questions. The teachers put more effort in because they felt like these were the smart kids. Anyway, it really just started with this core belief, I'm smart versus I'm not smart. And that genuinely influenced people's marks. And I think the, the little distinction, thinking about the law of manifestation not as the universe coming back to you or there being like a benevolent force out there that responds to you, but really our thoughts have a massive impact on the way we behave, the way we interact with other people, and there is so much power in you. And I think The Secret does touch on this idea, which is I think the last chapter is essentially like the secret is you. You're the one who creates these thoughts and you can you can actively challenge your thoughts and you can create positive hopeful thoughts and that leads to the behavior change. The only thing I'm a bit like uh, skeptical of is this idea of like when sometimes people talk about the idea of like quantum physics coming in um, and this idea of like brain frequencies. I don't think there's been very much research to support that idea, but there has been so much research to support the idea of growth mindset and having positive thinking, making you more motivated, giving you higher self-esteem, um, and those things actually leading to a lot of success. So thinking more about the idea of things happening because of you, not because of the universe, is really like a core takeaway here. So the next effect is called the confirmation bias, and I think this is one of the explanations for why there is such a big support for the law of attraction or manifestation. And this was first coined by Raymond Nickerson in 1998 in a paper called Confirmation Bias, a Ubiquitous Phenomena in Many Guises. Essentially, the core of it says that our existing beliefs are going to filter or affect the way that we recall past information, we interpret new information. An example of this might be if you, you suddenly bought a new iPhone or something, you're going to be much more likely to notice when you're just walking down the street, someone with the same iPhone model as you. Or if you just got pregnant, you're more likely to notice people with prams and babies and baby formula ads. And everyone's probably had little examples of that in their life where they're like, oh, I never even noticed this and now it's popping up more and more. One thing that's interesting is that in real life, this seems to happen a lot now because of technology and how it changes based on our interests. But previous to that idea, it's just our attention and what our attention points to. If I'm manifesting a certain number of subscribers, chances are I would have reached that number anyway. But when I reach that number, I'm manifesting it every morning, every day for a whole year, I manifested and I made blah happen. But I do wonder in certain examples if those things would have happened regardless of whether the person manifested it um, or not. But I'm just wondering whether the process of manifestation, the process of sitting down um, and making the dream board or the process of sitting down and using gratitude and alignment, if that actually was a thing that got them their goal or whether it was just the fact that they worked really hard towards it, they set a well-defined goal. What kind of maps onto this idea is this idea of correlation not equaling causation. And this is a core part of what makes things science, which is that things need to be proven to be directly caused by each other, not just kind of occurring at the same time. And it's not enough to say that manifestation caused me to get the yellow car if you can't prove that if you didn't manifest you wouldn't have gotten the yellow car. A very uh, fun kind of website to demonstrate this is actually something called, um, I'll link it below actually, but it's by Tyler Vigen and it's a website called Spurious Correlations. One of the top examples here is Number of people who drowned by falling into a pool is directly correlated with the films that Nicolas Cage has appeared in, with a correlation of uh, 0.66, a correlation of 94.94, which is very, very high, it's almost an identical correlation, is per capita cheese consumption is directly related to the number of people who died by becoming tangled in their bedsheets. And so sometimes when we look at data and we look at graphs and we say like, um, 
you know, this happened and this happened at the same time. It was just when I was manifesting, I achieved more of my goals. Perhaps it's not manifesting that's causing those goals, but maybe it's the fact that you were generally more positive about stuff. You had a greater self-belief and it was time in which that you were more dedicated to your goals and you put in a lot of hard work towards your goals. The correlation between those two things, manifesting and outcome or success, does not necessarily mean that manifesting caused that success. It's really hard to say that this is scientifically supported just by looking at correlational data. I wanted to talk about this idea of there being a correlation between people who are incredibly motivated, have the, the mindset of sitting down, thinking about what their goals are, defining those goals, visualizing the steps that will take them towards those goals, and that giving them a much, much higher chance of success than people who don't do that. And perhaps that being one of the mechanisms behind manifestation as well. Um, and there have been really, there's a lot of research on the idea of goal setting and how if we set clear, definable, maybe like smart goals, that is going to make us much more likely to achieve certain goals. A, a more recent study that's demonstrated this is by Dr. Gail Matthews in 2015 on goal setting um, from Dominican University. Two hundred and sixty-seven participants were recruited from different businesses, um, and they were divided into five groups. And first one had no goals, no particular plans. Second one had goals, but no plan. Third one had very well-defined goals and a plan of action. And the fourth added sending them to a supportive friend. And the fifth one added that they would also make weekly progress reports. The results found that the fifth group were significantly more likely to achieve their goals than all of the other groups. And I think manifestation is kind of nice in that it kind of taps into all of that. Like people talk about putting your dream board online for social support. It talks about the idea of visualizing exactly your plan of action. And it also talks about the idea of doing it daily and getting up and like having a space for your practice, which is really taps in with this idea of monitoring your progress. Science does actually tell us a lot about success and how to actually have our behaviors work in favor of the things that we want, have social support and that we have a strong belief in them happening and, you know, building our confidence and getting rid of limiting beliefs. And that is kind of boring. <laughs> and I think that's one of the reasons why manifestation is so popular because there's this idea, there's like a little there's a little sprinkle of magic of the universe kind of working in our favor and I don't really want to get rid of that for anyone um, because I, to be honest, I love the idea of manifestation. It's way more exciting than the idea of, you know, creating specific goals. However, there's kind of two sides to it, right? One is that magic actually kind of diverts us from what actually is happening behind manifestation, which is like the action and the goals. And we spend too much time in the like, making a pretty dream board. And we spend too much time on the, you know, if it doesn't happen, if we don't manifest something properly, we spend too much time thinking, you know, we didn't believe in the universe enough, or have the right frequency. There's always like an opportunity cost for our actions, right? And so if we spend a lot of money on a lot of these manifestation courses that are out there and we actually lose out on using that money for other things. And so let's say that we wanted to getting a promotion in our job. Person A could spend $500 on doing a course on learning how to properly manifest, or they could use that $500 on career counseling or uh, learning a new skill to upskill. And I think that's kind of that, that little bit of a dark side behind manifestation and the law of attraction because if we kind of know what it is and we kind of know what actually is behind the curtain and we kind of go well this is the science behind it you know it works but it's not I should kind of take it with a grain of salt um, if we don't have that view and we believe a hundred percent in the law of the universe and we spend too much time concentrating on like the sugar instead of the true medicine then I think that can be dangerous for some people. However, I have seen that quite a few of the YouTube videos that I've watched, people do mention like, this does not work unless you do. And so they kind of realize that it's all about their behaviors, but it is fun. It is fun thinking about, you know, if we, if we know the secret, we know about this secret law, then we're a much higher chance of succeeding. And I think sometimes just a little bit of positive belief isn't too harmful, but I can also really see 
a darker side of how manifestation can be dangerous if we believe it 100% without kind of acknowledging the science behind why it might actually be working. I think we've touched on quite a lot. Honestly, there is so much, and even in my notes, I've skipped over quite a few different theories. However, I think these are kind of the core ones or the ones that I think are most important. I think my kind of key takeaway is that manifesting probably does work to some degree, but take it with a grain of salt. Do not get too sucked in to the marketing that certain people who say that they're manifestation experts or that they are going to be the key to cracking you know manifestation for you and just remembering the whole time that really the core of it is you having the power to challenge limiting beliefs that you have that are holding you back and that a lot of the times if you believe that what you're doing is going to be good for you, going to be good for the world, you believe in yourself, set concrete goals, a concrete plan, and you kind of keep yourself accountable and you keep updating that, that is kind of going to be your way to achieving your goals. And that is a scientifically supported way. And so just kind of keeping that in mind, always at the back of our mind when we do fun things like dream boards and, you know, sitting down to manifest. Uh, if you have any questions at all, if you have any research articles you'd like to share with me to kind of build on this. I'd love to make a part two just to kind of touch on all this other stuff I'm down in the comments below. Thank you for everyone who's been voting in my community tab. That's the reason I made today's video because this was the highest clicked one. And apart from that, I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for kind of being so active in the community and writing comments and I read every single one and I tried to reply to as many as I can. It's been so wonderful just in the last couple of months to see how this channel has expanded and how there are so many people who want to become psychologists or who are interested in psychology um, and have just joined to kind of be part of this community. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye!